Amber. I do apologize for the delay. Oh, we're good. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And Lori, thank you for setting the stage for this evening. And I'd like to continue the process of setting the table, if you will, for my colleagues to be speaking after me. Um, this title, What's Worth Fighting For, actually came to me sometime in the summer as I was contemplating what I would share with the staff returning to school in September. And I thought about it for a while, and it occurred to me that what's essential is to determine why is there something worth fighting for? And I add this caveat that it's always important to continue to express gratitude in the face of whatever challenges we face. To me, that's a core principle, if you will, that regardless of the challenge, we must be grateful for what we have. We sit here this evening in this beautiful firehouse, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to be able to work with my colleagues. I'm grateful for all the brilliance that surrounds me each and every day. And for me, what's worth fighting for can be boiled down into this uh, poster. It's actually the public school is the greatest discovery made by man. So said Horace Mann in the 1800s. Education is best provided in schools embracing children of all religious, social, and ethnic backgrounds. And the same is true today. So what's worth fighting for? Well, if you think about it, in recent years, we've seen evidence in the headlines of all manner of things that are creating the why. Why is it important to fight for public education? And these are just a few of the many headlines that have appeared that probably are things that you can easily see, you've seen in some way, shape, or form, either locally or nationally. Is there a future for public education? Most of these were taken actually in September of 2014, the very recent past. Empty plates, kids are being bullied to skip school at lunch. And this is just representative of many, many, many headlines that have appeared and we confront even to this day. But I discovered something else over the summer, which is that it's not just in education where we find that there are issues that we should be concerned about. I think the broader context of society, and I want to point out, by the way, this article comes from 2011, which is four years ago, but this past summer in 2015, there were stories about what's taking place in the workplace in Amazon. And uh, as a matter of full disclosure, I do shop at Amazon, but I am concerned by the kinds of headlines that are represented. So in 2011, this was appearing in an article. During summer heat waves, Amazon arranged to have paramedics parked in ambulances outside ready to treat any workers who dehydrated or suffered other forms of heat stress. Those who couldn't quickly cool off and return to work were sent home or taken out in stretchers and wheelchairs and transported to area hospitals. That took place in Pennsylvania in 2011. Fast forward to 2015, inside Amazon, wrestling big ideas in a bruising workplace. Now where does this all bring us to? It brings us to the idea that the real issue Amazon's work culture raises is how disposable are people? And that, my friends, is the same thing that's happening with education today. Another question that is raised is whether it is an outlier or whether it represents the future of the workplace. Which brings me to what's worth fighting for. So you're going to see a lot of imagery, vivid imagery. And I want you to please take the images that you're about to see transfer them, translate them into your own schoolhouse, into your own children, into the teachers that you know, the circumstances that we should be looking at, we think of learning. So the first image that we have here is that of a child planting a seed. And that's in effect what we're doing. From kindergarten through 12th grade, we are planting seeds. That's something that's worth fighting for. The time that it takes to be able to give children that opportunity. When I think about the broad ideas of what's represented in the National Honor Society of scholarship, leadership, service, and character, that's the kind of robust educational experience that can and does happen in our schools that allegedly are in need of reform. And that's also part of my message, is to dispel the myth. The images that you're going to see were real images of real settings in real schools happening now not sometime in the future after we dispose of the current system. 
one of the key elements in my mind of something that's worth fighting for is authentic engagement. And that is evidenced in this picture right here from a robotics competition. And in that competition, we see the integration of literacy, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and the arts in performance-based tasks that require students to identify and solve problems. Whether or not you, you and your school system has a robotics team, you could apply this to theater. You could apply it to so many uh, venues, the sky is the limit. This just happens to be one of them. And we have to remind the so-called reformers that this is what is happening in our schools on Long Island, in New York, and in the United States. To engage students in the study of environmental and global issues. Time to apply what we learn in class. So when you're in math class and learning all mathematical formulas related to triangles, you must have the time to apply it in a real life situation such as this. This is the construction of a shed in the service of our school garden. A real purpose being used to this very, every single day this structure is being used. Thankfully with the help of students. But it's more than just academic application. It's the concept of teamwork that's learned. Teamwork on the field, teamwork in the service of academic learning. And it's the idea that the teacher supports the novice student. Whether it's this situation, or it's the kindergarten teacher on the carpet, or it's the physics teacher in the classroom, all of that kind of support is what teachers do best. The key here, my friends, is to be able to tell your administrators, this is what you expect in your education, and you have to stand up and fight for it. Don't take it for granted. Giving girls the opportunity to learn these kinds of skills is valuably valuable and important. What else is worth fighting for? You may not know it by seeing this simple little image, but it's an appreciation of the arts. That's what's worth fighting for. And in our school system in South Hold, we apply this in the service of performances. When I spoke at the uh, opening day, I reminded people, imagine a movie without musical accompaniment. So this was an event being taking place outside, or an event indoors, high school students, elementary students, giving children of all ages access to that. That's worth fighting for. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. This is a picture of a couple of children doing artwork outside in the school garden. And then that adorns the building. The sky is the limit in terms of the kind of application, the time to explore. That's the use of taking data that's worth something. Or time to dream. Again, these images, you have to transfer them and say they are appearing day in and day out in school systems everywhere. The idea of maintaining a community of learners where children are, being, are able to, at all ages, gather together and support one another in their, their quest for understanding. To create a culture of inquiry. Not where you're trying to get the right answer, but you're trying to figure out a better question to ask. And that's what teachers need to do in the 21st century. How do we sift through good questions and poor questions, quality questions from non-quality questions? The idea of creating a culture in which students become stakeholders in their community, preserving the right and the opportunity to engage in this kind of learning, in this kind of celebration. This is actually the dedication of an amphitheater that we have in our school district and to serve. We have a very uh, valuable and vital ROTC program to attend to the social and emotional well-being of all stakeholders within the learning community. What's worth fighting for? All of these things are worth fighting for. How about this? Being joyful as we learn. Is that a crime? I don't think so. Albert Einstein also said that play is the highest form of research. I dare say you can get college and postgraduate students studying the sociology, the science of a sandbox. Are we going to eliminate recess and play in the name of test prep? Be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Theater programs. 
to bring life of Shakespeare. All the world's a stage. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the idea of an amphitheater. To give children an opportunity to perform outside, to read poetry, to study Shakespeare outdoors, <coughs> in the fresh air, at night, under the lights. Even teachers can participate. <coughs> Finally, what's worth fighting for, we see evidence of this all throughout Long Island, the concept of school spirit. That's something worth fighting for. And so it brings me to this final notion of gratitude and the idea that as we engage in this fight, we must remember to be grateful for all that we have, for the opportunity to take on the fight, if you will. And these images appear by us locally in South Hold. There are images everywhere. There are images in the desert. There are images everywhere of the kinds of things that we have to remember to be grateful for. Thank you.